In 2697 BC, the Chinese were subject to the Yellow Emperor, who was also called Huangdi. From their accounts of his reign, we learn that he is considered the founder of Chinese civilization, being pointed to as responsible for creating wooden houses, carts, boats, the bow and arrow, medicine, and writing. But that doesn't seem to be enough, and we get to the point where, on the day he is supposed to die, it is actually realized that he is immortal. After all this, he rode a dragon up into the sky in broad daylight for all to see. Even more interesting, one of his wives was responsible for creating what we call silk today. But where did all this knowledge come from? You only have to look at the number of movies, books, and TV shows that feature extraterrestrial beings to see how much they have fascinated humans. It gets furthermore interesting when you find some conspiracy theories and legends that suggest that extraterrestrial beings helped build parts of the Great Wall of China. Today we'll look at some of these ancient Chinese legends of celestial beings, unexplained artifacts, and traces of advanced Mercury technology that have led many to believe that aliens influenced the Middle Kingdom long ago. Do you have a burning curiosity to learn about China's extraterrestrial beings? Hang in there, for we have a wealth of knowledge coming your way. Let's kick it off by talking about the Sangxingdui artifacts. Something about the sculptures called Faces of Sangxingdui feels both familiar and strange. A golden face with blue eyes that have been worn down looks out into the darkness. Around it, three other bronzy heads are lit up. Some have flat tops, others have round ones. A huge bronze figure that is almost nine feet tall watches over them all. All of them have sharp, keen eyes. People unfamiliar with the sculptures on display at the Hong Kong Palace Museum might think they are Mayan or Aztec. However, they date back thousands of years and were found very far from where the ancient civilizations of Mesoamerica were located. They were found on the Chengdu Plain in China at a place called Sanxingdui which means three-star mound in Chinese. Sanqingdui was not found until the 1920s, when a farmer was digging an irrigation ditch and came across some objects. It is believed to be the largest and oldest ruin of the Shu Kingdom, a civilization in southwestern China that only appears in myths and legends. Since then, the site has been found to have the remains of an old city with homes sacrificial pits, and tombs surrounded by high dirt walls. Archaeologists from the Sanxingdui Museum say the city was built between 4,800 and 2,800 years ago and went out of use around 800 BC for unknown reasons. According to history textbooks, the Chinese government has used the discoveries at Sanxingdui for more than a decade to show that the country has a long and continuous past. The strange masks have made some archaeologists wonder if they represent mythical beings or alien visitors from the past. No credible evidence supports these claims, however, and they are not accepted by mainstream historians or archaeologists. However, the multitude of strange faces and their supposed ritual arrangement must have taken their origin from somewhere. We recommend you watch our video, The Ancient War in Heaven and the Arrival of the Alien Gods. It is not only a journey through history, but also an investigation into the possibility that our gods were alien visitors. From Mesopotamia to Egypt, from the Mahabharata to the Greek epics, we look at ancient texts with a new perspective. Could ancient texts contain more than just stories? Now. Let's talk about the Yellow Emperor. Scholars can't agree on whether the Yellow Emperor was a mythical character or a real person whose story has been expanded over time. Some think that the Yellow Emperor was a mix of different historical figures who were merged into one person to help explain Chinese history and identity. Could he have been the Heavenly Father of all Chinese people, fighting the Wind God and the Rain God with the help of his own daughter, the Drought Goddess? 
Or was he an ancient ruler who built roads between princedoms and now lies buried in Shanxi province? Or was he really one of the earliest recorded Taoist cultivators? He might have been a little of everything. The Yellow Emperor is thought to have been born around 2704 BC and became emperor in 2697. According to legend, Huangdi defeated barbarians in a big fight somewhere in what is now Shangxi. That victory made him the leader of all the tribes in the Huanghe, Yellow River, Plain. He is also said to have started the government and the use of coins for money in some customs. Some old texts praise Huangdi as a great leader who was very wise and whose rule was a golden age. Lezu, his first wife, found silk and learned how to make clothes. Momu, his fourth wife, helped him manufacture the mirror. Furthermore, he is said to have had a dream about an ideal kingdom where the peaceful people lived in harmony with nature and had traits that were a lot like those taught by early Taoism. When Huangdi woke up from his dream, he wanted to bring these good qualities to his own country so that everyone could live in peace and prosperity. One story says that he told his minister Le Shu to create mathematics and Kangji to create China's first written character system. Besides the calendar and the compass, the man himself came up with many other essential things. Resounding Drums, a Shen Yun dance from 2006, is based on the story of how the Yellow Emperor created the drum, which was used for both music and war. The loud beat of his war drums boosted the morale of his army and scattered his enemy's forces. The story goes that his own men were also upset, so he came up with the plucked string gukin to make them feel better. Also, because medicine and music were so important in ancient Chinese thought, it may not be a surprise that he is also credited with writing the Yellow Emperor's Internal Canon, which is thought to be the world's oldest medical treatise. As we said earlier, it is believed that instead of meeting his death, he became immortal. He is a ruler, an inventor, a founder, and a god, all at the same time. Indeed, some accounts depict the Yellow Emperor as possessing supernatural powers and celestial origins, leading to theories he may have been an extraterrestrial. Legends say he ascended back to the heavens on a dragon after completing his work on Earth. Well, the next on our list is the Terracotta Warriors. The Terracotta Warriors are statues made of terracotta-baked clay. The statues show foot soldiers, horse warriors, and chariot fighters from ancient China. They were built around the necropolis, which is a large cemetery, to protect Emperor Qin's tomb or help him in the afterlife. It was common for rulers of ancient China to have a few sculptures to protect their burial sites, but these pale in comparison to the massive undertaking of the terracotta warriors. In March 1974, farmers digging a well found a room buried deep in the ground. This was the tomb where the terracotta army was kept. Later, archaeologists found an army of about 8,000 life-size terracotta troops and horses. The soldiers were put together from separate firing sections that had been given unique faces. Along with the terracotta army, there were ornately decorated chariots made of wood, which have since broken down, and bronze, iron farm tools, bronze and leather bridles, things made of silk, linen, jade, and bone, and weapons like spears, bows, arrows, and swords, made from a unique 13-element alloy that is still shiny and sharp today. Once the clay figures were brightly painted with mineral colors, they were put together in a certain military formation that was standard at the time. It had a vanguard of bowmen and crossbowmen, outer files of archers, groups of infantrymen and charioteers, and an armored rearguard. In the 1970s, three nearby chambers were also found. One had more than 2,300 ceramic figures of foot troops, chariots, and cavalry that were meant to complement a smaller, complementary force. The other had 68 figures for what is probably an elite command unit, and the third was empty. The pieces of a wooden roof that may have fallen off because of a fire soon after the emperor died are buried above and around many of the broken figures. In summary, the site reflects the grand ambition of the emperor, 
who sought to conquer death itself. Some believe Qin Shi Huang was inspired by otherworldly knowledge in pursuing immortality and creating a symbolic replica of the heavens filled with mercury rivers. Speaking of mercury, let's look at the presence of mercury. The interesting use of mercury in the mausoleum of the first Qin emperor has caught the attention of both experts and ordinary people. It's over 2,000 years old and was built during the rule of Emperor Qin Shi Huang, who is famous for his big building projects and his work to unite China. The presence of mercury in the tomb was first recorded in the 8th century, but it wasn't until recently that experts fully understood how it was used. One idea about why mercury was used in the tomb is that it was used to make rivers and lakes look real. The metal mercury is a liquid with a clear silver color and high density. When it's poured out, it can create a surface that moves like water. The mercury may have been used to make a river in the tomb, which would have been very impressive to see. According to another idea, the mercury may have been used to make a map of the Chinese kingdom. People think that the tomb is a copy of the emperor's palace, and the mercury may have stood for the rivers and oceans that surrounded the kingdom. For them, this would have been a sign of the emperor's power and authority. Within three years of investigating the tomb, the Chinese government has taken steps to lower the amount of mercury in the area because people are worried about the health risks to workers and tourists. But scientists are still looking into how its use will affect the environment and people's health in the long run. That said, the high mercury concentrations found in ancient Chinese tombs are further proof of possible extraterrestrial technology. Mercury was used in sophisticated devices not thought possible in ancient times. Could it be that the lethal metal has been part of alien tech meant to assist in space travel? Mystery still surrounds China's extraterrestrial legends. While definitive proof remains elusive, the circumstantial evidence continues to accumulate. This means that the country's ancient past may still hold more cosmic secrets to be discovered. Let us know what you think in the comment section. Deepen your adventure by watching our playlists. And if you want more, just play the next episode that comes up as a suggestion on your left.